As I was growing up, there was this cliche that youths are the leaders of tomorrow. Mm -mm. We have the first. Gone are the days when people who engaged in community work, mentorship, and general capacity building were the older members of the community. Today we have Kelvin Opondo to just elaborate on that. So Kelvin, yes. uh, tell us what you do. I have a friend of mine who normally says we are community developers. So our work is much involved with the community. Basically, we work with the kids, the youths, and uh, for, uh, for now we are working with also the, uh, the, the youths and the children who are within the, uh, the remand home, that is the juvenile prison. Yes. So let's talk about what you do. Let's talk about the mentorship. Okay. How did you venture into it? Out of interest and desire and passion to work for youths, my age. Uh, I was motivated by the fact that uh, we face a lot of challenges as youths and just like you said it has always been on the focus that the, uh, the elderly people understands the problem we go, to, we go through very well but I felt like some solutions to the problems we are facing as youths we have it on our own. So out of seeing the challenges that we are facing in the society that motivated me to put myself into having solutions to be able to solve the matter that we are facing as youths in the society. And that is why our focus much goes with how then are we able to improve the lives of the youths or the kids who are living within the community setup. And because of that, we have ventured into different ways. Uh, considering also my training, uh, we have ventured into different ways on how to be able to solve uh, these matters that our youths are currently facing. For example, uh, we are just from COVID. Of course, we still have the effects of COVID until now. A number of youths who are locked in the houses, like we saw the restriction the government had put in place. And unfortunately, COVID found me somewhere else. I was in Zimbabwe and I was completely stuck. I didn't know what to do until I found means and methods to come back home. But as I met youths when I was here, everyone was complaining. They have nothing to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I also thought, does it mean that we have nothing to do as youths? And I think no. It's a lot of things we can do. But no one comes out to be able to share with us and talk to us and enlighten us that these are the parts that we as youths are able to take on our own. So in the process of meeting youths here and there, uh, that was two years ago, we, we, we started a small program in our community and we thought of how can we bring these small boys and girls and work with them and focus on them and try to do things that are of greater benefit to themselves and to the society at large. So as we were walking in through the villages and the community, it was like we need to meet the girls mm -hmm. and talk to the girls, not to engage with the boys. But is it only about the girls? No, also the boys. They should be responsible. These are our young sisters in the community. What is it that we can be able to do to make sure that such kind of things, if they happen, but the rate goes down? So that is what motivated me and a number of views that I brought in, in, in place. That is, I'm speaking about the recent past and we were able to start a number of projects within the community and until now, I can say that they are doing so. Can you mention some of the projects? Uh, we, 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 because uh, we, we had a program with the university students who were at home during that time and uh, the question that I threw to them was, we do not know exactly when this thing will come to an end. Mm -hmm. What are you able to do? So it's like everyone was at home, even in the marketplace, few people were coming in. So we thought, what if we gather a small amount of cash and we buy onions and we sell to people in their home states? Okay. And so the question was, how do you get the money? We don't have money, which is very normal. Mm -hmm. When we want to start a business, everyone thinks of where do I get the money from? As much as we don't have money, but still there is some cash that passes across our hands, that small bit of it, we can gather it up and make something great. So yes, with the, with the students, we gathered around 10,000 shillings. Nice. And I made a move, uh, visited a number of people. Some of them were my classmates, and I asked them for my support. And they chipped in with another 10,000 shillings. I moved to our area member of parliament, gave 
came our proposal. He also chipped in with some small cash. And that is how we started. And it was of great benefit. And of course, people were surprised. How are these young boys doing this? And is it sustainable? Yes, we did it until time came up when they all went to their schools. Uh, during that time as well, uh, we initiated another program within the streets of Kisumu. We know we have a number of street points within the streets. And of course, them were also suffering. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether you've interacted with them, but in normal location, when you meet them, they ask money from you. Yeah, they only 10 shillings, only 20 shillings. And the kind of facial expression they give out, it's like they're really angry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they really need something. You really need to help them. Yeah. So when we sat down and thought, is this the best way to treat these young boys mm -hmm. in the street? Because rarely you see the young guys. I thought of it like they are not just street boys. They are our young brothers. And if we are stepping in, we are stepping in to the point that we are their older brothers. And we need to help them solve the problem they're having. So we started a program within the streets of Kisumu. And we initiated an activity whereby we could meet in a certain place. We engage in football. We do other games. And then we can take a meal together. And they began to open up. In the angle of opening up, I realized that most of them earn much than I do. <laughs> yeah. It's only that they can't use it well. No one teaches them exactly how to use what they earn. So with one mind, we thought of, we are not going to give these boys money, mm -hmm. but we want to, the, the older youths, those who are above 18, we want to make them use the money that they are earning in the streets to make them have a better life. So an organization in town came in and uh, took us through some training with the street boys, okay. and actually the street youths, and we designed a method on how they can be able to save. Uh, I was also in that class, and that class taught me much more, even in saving skills. And a number of them began to save, like, how much do you earn in a day? 20 shillings, 30 okay. shillings, 40 shillings, 50, 100. Write it down. Don't work on how much you save, but just work on how much you earn. So we bought them books, and now they are putting it down. Every day, I got this amount here, I got this amount here. And then we bought another book, how they are using their money. Or I bought drugs with the money or I had food with the money. So you are able to trace and put a track on how they get their money and how they use their money. So from there, we were able to balance out. This is how much you can earn in a day. This is how much you're spending. What if you reduce your spending on this and this and this area and start saving? And we picked on that. And they began saving. And now they have accounts and they're saving their money. And some of them started businesses and they're doing so well. So that is something that we are actually very proud of. Again, we are working with a number of partners and we started another program at the Remand Home. This is a, a place whereby uh, children who are below 18 years, of course, who are either in need of a, a care and protection, that is one, or they have been into contact with the law. They are placed there for a temporary period before their cases are finalized. So we thought of, what if again we visit them? We organized for some festivals. Like we just cook and play football and talk to them and open up and they were enjoying the sessions. Then from then on, as we thought of, now, why don't we engage them and talk to them? Because they are there. One mind that is, has already been fixed in them is they are criminals. Some, mm -hmm. of them might, some, some of them might be taken as criminals. Yeah. You know, when this mind runs into you, you get affected, even in your future. So we also thought, we don't deal with them like those who are in a remand home, but they are our younger brothers and sisters again. Mm -hmm. We handle and address them, not that we are professionals, but we get to the level of on their side. We want to fill them with a reason, with an idea of coming up to a solution, the problem that they have already faced. So we have also been running the program at the Remand Home, that is uh, the Kisumu Remand Home, and we are so glad that uh, our activities are gaining roots and they are really enjoying the program that we are doing with them. I would love to understand more on how you approached a remand home to give such mentorship. Because I believe, in my own opinion, that uh, there are, you've said about the stereotypes of how they are criminals. Yes. In a way, they may be shy mm -hmm. from meeting people like you. Uh -huh. How did you go about that? We are youths. Okay. <laughs> we don't come as teachers. We are youths. And we easily connect. Mm -hmm. And having been in the streets for two years, working with the street boys, uh, and of course, some of them are also caught and taken to the remand home before they're either taken home or they're taken to prison or something of the sort. So we already have better ways on how we can be able to interact and associate with them. You know, once you're comfortable with me, once you're able to obtain trust in me, it is very easy to open up and talk. Yeah. 
yeah and the angle of talking we are able to come up with a solution probably understanding exactly what made you be here it's a long process we are living in a world of cause and effect of course we discuss effect so much but we forget about the cause some of them have been undergoing through difficulties and burdens and situations for a long time it might be from the families it might be from school and no one gives that ear to listen of course when you are caught having committed a crime the focus is on the crime that you committed not what led you to commit that crime but our focus is what led you there you are at this point you have you are at this situation what led you to that point because if you do not discuss the cause of the problem we cannot come to a solution to the problem itself once in a while we are able to trace the families of this of these street kids and take them back home but our intention is not just dropping them home but we also want to listen from the parent side uh, what is the challenge that this kid faces so much that makes him to leave home and go to the streets they are comfortable in the street but this is not a good place why it is cold i mean your health is not guaranteed yeah. <laughs> your safety is not guaranteed mm -hmm. yeah your life is at stake anything can happen at any time and of course we have had so many cases happening in the streets a number of them have died as well in the streets uh recently we a boy was in my team i had a small circle of boys that i was mentoring in the streets he was a very good football player he was washing cars at the stage and he was saving money as well i really liked him mm -hmm. i was passionate about him he was so close to me and just all of a sudden i just had he died yes and i was so disappointed because he was someone i really wanted to nurture and see him come out of the life that he was living he was staying in the street as much as he was earning money but we had moved to the level of finding him a house we were not paying for the house but we trained him on how you can be able to pay for the house this is how we did it you earn your money you give it to us okay you take your lunch you take your breakfast of course some of them are using drugs and we can't stop them from using drugs immediately but we advise them not to use much so we try to bring in their money and we keep it for them so by that we were able to rent them houses buy them things in the house and this young man had his own house nice. and he was staying in the house but i guess i don't know exactly what happened the story was not so clear and we heard that he was he was beaten to death that was so unfortunate it yeah. broke my heart because he was the team captain <laughs> we we have a football team at the streets he was the football captain i was very much disappointed and i felt like how will will i be putting my life at stake working with the boys and this is what happens i mean all of a sudden you lose them that was one the other one became mad <laughs> he was from uganda he was in the streets of kisumu also he was saving nicely he was listening carefully every time i could have a class with them and i could ask them the things we discussed two weeks ago or three weeks ago they still bring it out and i was so much encouraged these are boys who don't go to school but they are so bright yeah. they are able to speak of things that we discussed three or four weeks ago and that really motivated me and i saw future in them when i looked at them i saw future in them these boys can do better they only need someone who can understand them but these two broke my heart and i felt like i think i'm done with the street <laughs> program mm -hmm. because i have worked on it of course i'm not paid for doing that and i really loved them i really focused on them i i i a lot of people walked away from me because i was dealing with the street boys and now this is happening so such challenges really broke my heart as a person mm -hmm. and i saw like my efforts were going to waste but those were such of the few cases but again when we see a number of them also doing well in business you still get encouraged mm -hmm. yeah having houses coming from the street and renting their own houses starting their own business you get encouraged and it's like as much as that has happened something good also is taking place so that motivates us and again i would love to say that there are certain challenges you are meeting in the street that we are not able to solve it's beyond our capability of handling so we try to increase our networks with people in the society and hoping to work with the different organizations in areas whereby we completely cannot solve the problem we also try to engage with people who at least can be able to offer us some support and help us go through certain would, situations would you mention those certain challenges that you need extra help in uh of course we need to work hand in hand with the, with the police we know sometimes uh, probably it's a notion that people will say that police are brutal but again they are there for the sake of us and mm -hmm. there are areas where we cannot handle their families we cannot visit on our own we'll need their assistance yeah. to be able to take these kids back at home 
these kids get violent sometimes in the streets. We cannot handle them well. We are not trained for that. We will need people who are the ability for that. And yes, we work with the Red Cross. There are things that the street boys might need that we are not able to offer to them. They come in to support us in one area or another. Uh, sometimes we need to take them home. And the remand home has also been of greater help with the knowledge to be able to handle such kind of occasions and even to be able to trace the families of these kids and sometimes to facilitate the means to be able to move to these places and see how some of them can go back home safe. Yes. There is okay. this thing when mtoto akishindi kana nyumbani mzazi anampeleka kwa polisi. Atengenezwe. What what is your opinion on that? I think uh, mtoto sio sio mzazi. Mtoto ni wa community. And our communities I am sorry to say this we have lost that touch. It's like the responsibility of a child is entirely on the parents, which is not the case. When I was young when I was growing up when I made a mistake in the community, before I was taken to my parents the person who found me making that mistake will deal with me right there. <laughs> but that doesn't happen these days. I will blame the parents in one direction because if someone tends to get close to your child after he or she has done a mistake, you will say that child is mine. And now when the problem becomes bigger on the child's side, when you cannot handle it on your own, you want to blame people, right? So I will say this, the children do not belong to the parents, they belong to the community. And it is the community responsibility to work on the kids in a general perspective. Yes, so it is our responsibility. When you see something wrong happening, for example, uh, we walk around the streets, you will say, no, 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 no. It is my responsibility to keep my city clean, for example, right? I'd rather pick it because I believe you have dustbins all along. You can pick it and dump it, put it in a dustbin in a better place. So same way, I think, when we see something wrong happening in our society, we might say the police is doing nothing. Okay, we can say our government is doing nothing, but I want to say it is our responsibility and to work with those who have been assigned to do such kind of work. Yes. So uh, mentorship requires a lot. If Definitely. I was someone who wants to to start mentoring, what do I need to consider? Our greatest, my great op opinion will be: Do you have an interest? And have you seen a challenge in the community that you think you need to work on? Mm -hmm. Of course, when you see that, you will always want to say, I do not have the necessary resources. Mm -hmm. The resource is you. <laughs> I am the resource. Mm -hmm. I am the one who can make the change. Change begins with me. Yeah? So when you want to become, when you want to mentor people, you have to think of it from yourself. What is it? The question I keep on asking myself is, what is it that I can do that can change my community? How am I able today? How am I doing something that is making my community, my society, a better place. Yes, that is how mentorship begins. We need trainings, yes, but what if trainings are not there? <laughs> yeah, what motivates yeah. you? What encourages you? Mm -hmm. Because when you speak about mentorship, there are so many areas of mentorship, right? And in this case, it's not more of knowledge-based mentorship. It is more of passion-based mentorship. I have something I am passionate about. And the moment I start doing that, I sincerely believe you'll always find people who will be interested in what you're doing mm -hmm. and they'll come in to support and assist you. Are there groups or people you've taken under your wing in terms of training for mentorship? Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. A number of people, a number of youths, not only in Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, with an interest of working with youths, I've traveled across Eastern and Southern Africa. I, I, I really wanted to know, is it that only Kenyan youths have problems? So it made me move to Uganda, it made me move to Rwanda, to Burundi, it made me move to Zambia, to Tanzania to Zimbabwe and to South Africa. And I realized that we are all facing the same problem. I even thought of, is it only in Africa? I had a chance to go to South Korea. Nice. I also realized it's, youth problem is global. <laughs> we all have problems. And, and this is what encourages me much. I only thought that our problems are our problem, but it is not the case. And I also believe that it is us as the youths. The greatest potential we have is being a youth. And just being a youth itself, as its own solution to the problem that you are facing in the society. Because we are right there on the ground. I know how you feel. Sometimes I feel like my parents cannot really know exactly how I feel, but if I meet a fellow youth like me, can know exactly how I feel. And with the experience that we have, and the challenges we've met, I again assume that we have a better solution to help those who are younger than us, to improve and make this society a better place. And has it become a little bit better from where you started? Yes, uh -huh. better. Tell us about it. Uh, I, I, I was in Burundi for a year mm -hmm. as a volunteer in a youth program. And of course, Burundi is different from Kenya. 
we are a little bit developed. Not a little bit, but let me say much developed than Burundi. Mm -hmm. And I thought of what am I able to do in Burundi as a person. I, I'm not a teacher by profession, but they were struggling to learn English. So in the organization I was told, why don't you go through these English books and teach English to these classes? It was interesting, but it was challenging, <laughs> very challenging. Yeah, yeah. And much more, my class was based on university students, and they were really eager to learn. Yeah. I took a class for one year, and for that one year, I thought of organizing an English speech contest. And luckily enough, I was supported by the American Embassy to run the English speech contest. I was so proud of it. And number two, we organized for leadership concerts with the youths. And right now, I have a friend of mine who's working at the UN, and he was my English student. So I met him in Burundi, and he asked me, what is it that I can do? And I told him, for you to learn much more better, please move to Kenya. Yeah, I will connect to my organization, move to Kenya and learn more. And he came to Kenya. He has been staying in Kenya. And actually, he's also giving back. He's teaching French <laughs> in Kenya as much as he came to learn English. And he's being so great. And the activities that he has learned in Kenya is now working hand in hand with the UN Habitat to run programs in Congo. So for that, that is one example that I'm sincerely proud of. I have seen someone who I'm so much proud of and is doing great things in the society. That is, yeah. so, that is so inspiring. Yes. And uh, so apart from mentorship, what other activities are you involved in? Uh, I love farming. Ah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I love farming and I'm really motivated into that. Uh, of course, I started a project which did not go so well, but I'm still much into it. Uh, training the youth. This is, again, everything that I do comes back into, into mentorship. I, 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 I love agriculture. And I also thought, unajua wa mezoea, wanasema kwamba wazendi wa kulima, sidiyo? And I was motivated by a young man in my society. Alikuwa mefuga kuku, anatengenezea kuku chakula ye mwenyewe, na akona ngombe. Babake alikufa kamachango memoja, akona ngombe tano sahi. Akona shamba, ekane, analima maindi, anapanda mboga, anajilipia school fees. And he is a yo? Yes. So he's a little bit younger than me, and I decided to volunteer three months on his farm to learn from him what he's doing. So I will go there early in the morning, and by five, we may talk and end up one. So I was motivated. <laughs> yes. So that got me encouraged. So also youths can do farming at this great level. So I was really challenged, and that has really motivated me also to put myself into farming. And in my small community, in my home setup, they are smaller kids whom I encourage by buying for them chickens. Yeah, and I tell them, you want school fees, but you can make your school fees on your own. Ukiwa na kukuta tu leo. Baada mezi sita saba, iku kutataka mayai, ya, na itakuwa na viparanga. Baada mezi sita, tatu, ita, itakuwa metosha kuuza. Itakuwa na pesa yako. Itakuwa mdogo, lakini itakuwa natengeza pesa yako. So even in that angle, I also think it's still mentorship, but again, it's on the agricultural sector, which has again been able to motivate me so much. I, I am a sportsman. I love jogging a lot. <laughs> yes, it makes me, I, it brings me to thinking yeah. and organizing my mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love reading books a lot. I read a lot. Actually, I wake up at four. Yeah. Yes, read until around six, go for jogging, yeah. and then I can get back to my normal duty. Because I believe in books, you read the minds of people. Normally people say they have they have role models, but I ask them how many books of the people you admire have written have you read? And a number of people say they haven't even read a single book. Yes. Someone says like Obama is my Barack Obama, the former US president, is my role model. How many books have you read of Barack Obama? Then how would you how would you call him your role model and you know nothing much about him apart from what you see on the TVs? So that makes me to read books and by that, I'm able to get closer to these people more than I can get to them in person. So if I want, because I'm more of, I am a leader, and I read a lot of leadership books, because I believe that you, as much as you go to class to learn, that is not enough. You need to do a number of things, and that's what motivates me even to read more books. That, so I love reading. That's mm -hmm. really, really interesting. Yes. Saying that this is ventured mostly on individual decision, mm -hmm. uh, how can the society support or what can the society do? Uh, uh, generally, when you speak about support, of course, you normally speak about monetary in terms of resources, funds, money. To me, that is not it. <laughs> you see, we have a number of youth groups which are so dormant because their intention was we start a youth group, then we get money from the government. 
<laughs> yeah, so we can run our programs. And again, if you visit a number of youth groups, again, they'll say, we are not in operations. Why? We don't have funds. So do we have to work because of money? No, we don't have to work because of money. Do you have the idea? Can you start the idea? Yes, you can start the idea. Whether you have the funds or not, or you don't have the funds. I believe, I am a strong believer, every good cause will always attract support. There are people who will be watching. Whether you advertise yourself or you don't advertise yourself, people will be seeing what you're doing. And they will always come to support you. I am a witness of that. Out of the things that I'm doing, all the connections I've got are as a result of people seeing exactly what I'm doing. And they get close and they tend to support. So of course it's challenging because you, you may not know when this support will come in. Yeah, yeah. But we are not doing this for the sake of the support. We are doing this for the sake of making our community in Lausati a better place. That is our main interest. Whether it comes or it doesn't come, our main focus is what is it that I'm doing today that will make my society a better place for the next generation? Yeah. Yes. That is that is really I'm I'm actually at all like wow what you, what you're doing is so so inspiring so motivating to see that someone takes that initiative to change what is at his home place yes. you know mm -hmm. and you through that Umenda countries different countries to do the same thing and I would really love to appreciate you for sharing your story thank you yeah so that is not just a story that is not just a narrative from Kevin it is a it is a message it is an imploring message to tell you to do something make a change if you feel you have the passion to make a change out there go ahead and do it do not focus on the funds the funds will come as he has said the funds will come this has been a very very impressive conversation and I would love such conversations to continue at your home place at your groups where you meet your friends go talk about how you can change the society. This has been Youth in Action. I am Nyangwe Sokri. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it.